Hello, this is Craig with Carshalton Advisory, and today we're going to go through the second half of the practice task for Objective 3.1 in the Microsoft Office Specialist Excel Expert 2016 Study Guide. Let's get started. So our first task today is to go on to our parts worksheet, and then we're going to create a formula here in cell F16 that's going to use the average ifs function. So let's start with an equal sign. Now when we start typing in average, we'll notice that there is this contextual menu that pops up. What we can do is arrow down to where we see average ifs and hit tab to integrate it into our formula. So the first area that Excel needs information on is what we're gonna use as our average range. Now they've specified that we use structured references for this. So in order to do that, we're gonna start by typing in the name of our table, which they've told us is parts. So sure enough, we now have parts show up on our contextual menu. We can tab to bring that, integrate that in. Now we'll need a square bracket and the range that we want. In this case, it's gonna be gross margin. There, it's popped up for us. Square bracket to close that off. So that is the area that Excel is going to be calculating the average of. However, we don't want the average of everything. We only want it if a specific criteria is met. So the next bit of data that Excel needs is the criteria range. And so our criteria is parts that cost less than $10. So what we need is the cost column. So again, we're gonna type in our parts table, square bracket. We're gonna find our cost column square bracket to bring that in. All right, next, Excel needs to know what our criteria is. And this has been specified as greater than 10. Now this is again a situation where uh, they're asking us to bring a constant into a formula and you know that I'm not a big fan of that uh, and neither should you. Uh, however, in order to uh, be in line with the textbook, we'll do that. Just remember as you go through this so that while this textbook is great for teaching specific techniques, it is not necessarily 100% accurate for best practices um, as far as how you'd want to do things in the professional world. But this will solve the practice task as they've requested it. Let's hit enter and see what happens. All right, so our result is 50.6, and that is not correct because we actually want uh, less than $10, and I've made it for greater than. So we are just going to go into our formula bar here. We're going to change that greater than symbol into a less than. We'll hit enter, and perfect. Now we have 81.2%, which is our average for items that cost less than $10. Let's go on to our next task. All right, so we're going to move on to our customers tab by hitting control page down. And in this case, they want us in cell number L1 to use the count ifs function. So the syntax with count ifs is slightly different than what we've seen in the sum ifs and the average ifs. In those, the first uh, criteria that they needed was the range that's going to get either summed or averaged. In the case of a count, they don't, they don't need that information. So what we'll do is we'll hit uh, equals. We'll start with our count and arrow down to count ifs. We'll tab to integrate that. Now, this is not a, a table per se. Uh, so we won't be able to use structured references. So our criteria range, the first one that we're going to use is the country and region, which is column J. So we'll go into J94, control shift down to select the whole column. I'm going to hit a four to lock that range in. And the next range we need is, oh, and what we need this to do, the criteria of it, we're only going to count if the entry in there is United States with a space. So that is our first criteria, that it's going to count anything that has the United States in it. However, because we're going to add a second criteria, this time it's going to be the state province range. So that is column H. I'll control shift arrow down. 
All right, all the way to the, we get to the bottom as there's blanks in this one. In this case, it's probably faster for me just to hit 94 because I can see that in my first criteria. We'll F4 that to lock it in. And in this case, they've specified that they're looking for the region value of OR, meaning Oregon, and not OR as the function OR. Now, it seems to me they, they should have just used the region of, or state of like Washington, WA, and then it wouldn't have had that confusion for us. Anyways, we'll enter OR into the second criteria. So now what this formula is saying is to count anything that has a country region of the United States, and because there is a second criteria range and criteria and range, it's only going to count if both are accurate. So both the United States and or. Now, again, you could have solved this just by having the state or province of or being highlighted because everything that has an or for Oregon is obviously going to be in the United States. But again, this is a textbook example here. So we'll we'll stick with it as it is. We'll hit enter to, to see what we have. And uh, it's given us a count of four, which I believe is the correct number. We've got uh, one here, a second there, third, and there is our fourth. So thanks for following along. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and, or would like any further explanation on anything that we've gone through so far. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory.